Hey everyone, my name is Rui and we are here. This is going to be week number one of the APAD League and we're going to have a team for the first four weeks. Uh, I did put out a draft recap analysis type of thing that's already up, but this is going to be our first match with the team itself. And uh, you guys can see just in my first build with this team, it was a lot of fun to build with. I do have the Scizor, the Mega Beedrill, the Greninja, Delmize, Delphox and uh the dreadagon my opponent has a very very scary team does have the silvali still don't know what type that's gonna be but uh has plenty of options against me seismitoad which is hugely scary seismitoad is one of the uh scariest type of rock setters just no nuisances in the format Weavile, Mega Gallade, and Volcarona. So Volcarona is clearly very scary, but uh, I felt like I could manage that decently well. I was really going to be scared of the Weavile and uh, the Mega Gallade. And of course, just random grass coverage for the Seismitoad. So my Greninja does have the Grass Knot. And if I remember correctly, so does my Delphox. But with that, I think I'll just get right into the match. Uh, I think I struggled quite a bit with leads. I'm generally not the type of guy that just wants to lead off with a Mega Beedrill. Assuming that I can U-turn out because uh, that has been used against me in the past with Scarfed Mons, with Sucker Punch Mons, stuff like that. But uh, he had the pretty obvious Seismitoad lead and this felt like a decent opportunity where I felt like I could do it. Seismitoad teams generally like to lead with the Seismitoad and I just wanted to take some sort of an opportunity to just be able to do some type of damage to this thing early. And really gauge what type of seismitoad this was and uh i think we see in just a second that it is a rocky helmet so i got to figure out that this is a max defense seismitoad or close to it and that is huge because just seeing how much damage my uh b drill did to that on a resisted hit or not a resisted on on, on a max defense seismitoad was really uh encouraging in this moment so Obviously, it lets me go for free into my um, Delmize, which can threaten it out. It can threaten Rapid Spin, but I just opt to take an opportunity to Power Whip. And it is a Silvali Steel, which does make a whole bunch of sense given his team comp. And he takes it super well. Is able to get off an Ice Beam. But were I able to take that super well? I think I might have been a Salt Vezid for this matchup. I really prioritize the Rapid Spin in this situation just uh to try and mitigate the effect of the seismitoad for the later game i do end up switching out and i go into my delphox i kind of expected another uh ice beam to come in but he does just go for the parting shot which uh kind of surprised me i felt like he was super prioritized just getting another huge chunk of damage off with the ice beam but he could have thought that i had synthesis but i don't know if i was assault vested then he would have known that i'm not too sure um Regardless, I am able to go into the Delphox, and he goes into his Glade. Now, this is a super interesting situation. On paper, my Delphox deals with this thing decently well. Does it go for the bulk up? But uh, this is where I go for the Will-O-Wisp, and thankfully I land it. I always am now afraid that I'm going to miss it after a few not great experiences with that, but... Uh, we do get the burn off. This thing is still plus one. I don't really want to mess with this thing too, too much. So, uh, yeah, I just switch out. And I end up going into the Jordagon. I want to deal maybe... This was... Okay, also, this was the thing that I was most okay with getting knocked off. Which was kind of what I was expecting. Generally, like I said, Delphoxes deal with Glades decently well. Except for the knockoff. And this thing being, being able to get some Rust skin damage off would help me out quite a bit. And uh, I just take this opportunity to get Stealth Rocks up. And I'm going to assume that I take this opportunity to go back into my Delmize. Oh no, he doubles. He doubles. Assuming that I'm going to do something. I might just sub here. I might just sub here. I was a sub glare. Um, I was a sub glare. Dr Dreadagon. So, yeah, I think I take this opportunity to try to sub and 1v1 the seismitoad because i wasn't too too scared of what this thing could have done to me but i end up glaring the um the silvali which in this moment i was trying to 1v1 it if i could eq this silvali and this the glared silvali i could try to 1v1 this thing potentially but uh this clearly was not a matchup that i thought out terribly well because the sylveon can come in at any time and hyper voice me so 
at this point I have my leftovers knocked off and I'm behind a sub that this uh, Sylveon can bypass so that was a bit of um, super questionable t team building on my part but it is what it is I will just uh, aggressively go into this Sylveon because I expected to be able to take a hyper voice fine I wasn't too too concerned about what uh, type of damage this hyper voice could have done and I super was not expecting it to click Psy shock in this moment so it just goes for the protect as I believe I just reveal poison jab in this situation oh no I swords dance yeah no at this point because he took the, the turn to heal bell I was confident enough apparently that I could um swords dance up on this thing but yeah I was really feeling oh no I was really expecting it to switch out it, it, I expected him to expect me to want to poison jab, so I thought this could be a huge opportunity for me to be able to uh, get a sword dance up. I go for a poison jab, hoping to take this thing out because I really did not want to mess too, too much with rocket helmet damage. And in this situation, uh, I end up having to hit it twice, which super, super stinks. Uh, I only drew a run because I was mildly afraid of the Sovali trying to aggressively switch in, but realistically, that's not too, too strong of a play in this situation. But he does bring in the Weavile. Now, uh, this is a pretty bad situation for me because I did all the counts. And I and from every indication, it looked like I could take an Ice Shard. Uh, f uh, like, it was a 50-50 chance to take it. But uh, he does reveal Life Orb, which I believe made it a guaranteed KO at that range. Which I wasn't expecting. If, if anything, I was expecting something closer to, like, I don't know. I was expecting like a chopple like uh, um some kind of a, a berry or scarf or something crazy like that but he ended up being life orbed which i think i'll uh, put it in his favor most of the time and regardless uh that was never a an interaction that i should have really messed with i should have switched out i should have preserved my um b drill because now it's going to make dealing with things like the Sylveon a lot, a lot harder. If anything, I always had the Scizor to switch into uh, on that play. But regardless, um, now he switches in his Sylveon. And it's becoming super clear to me that I don't have a whole bunch of things that can deal with this uh, really well. So now I'm forced into a really awkward position. I end up Swords Dancing up on the Sylveon, which at that point, I guess I was going for a game as just assuming that the Sylveon didn't have the uh, Hidden Power Fire. I guess it was super iffy at that point just because of the, just because of the uh, Heal Bell and the Protect and the, and the Hyper Voice. So I guess it was iffy at that point, but then I stay in on the Sylveon and that was just a mental mistake on my part because in my head, I think I think I thought it was still paralyzed, so I could click a plus two superpower and uh, KO it from that range. But uh, for whatever reason, I just completely my brain just didn't work in that moment, and I ended up um, get going down to that uh, flamethrower. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But regardless, I go into the um, I go into the Del Fox, and I go for that fire blast. I deal critical hit damage and. Uh, I get it down to a decent amount, but at this point, I'm completely out of Sylveon answers. My Greninja does not have a Gunk Shot or anything like that, although I'm hoping in this situation to kind of bluff Gunk Shot, and I knew it was going to protect, so my only hope was to try to get a Water Z off. If I had Poison Z Gunk Shot, then that would put me in a pretty decent position. Not a great position, but um, it would at least help me out somewhat here. And regardless... Um, as soon as that scissor went down, that scissor went down for no reason. Again, just a super, really silly mental mistake of me thinking that it was still paralyzed and uh, going for that superpower in that moment. Uh, that would have been a huge help, but also that B drill on a super unnecessary damage risk. Uh, there was no reason for me to risk that ice shard. I knew he had to click ice shard. Um, I thought maybe he could have been scarfed the, the way that he brought it in. But no, Ice Shard was uh, clearly the better play there. And I always had the Scizor to switch in. There was no reason not to go into Scizor in that situation. It was just a moment of me being super greedy. And that was a huge, huge risk that I absolutely never should have taken. And there's no situation, if I had thought about it a, a little bit harder, that I ever should have taken that risk. Regardless, we do some more switching around. But um, for me in this moment, it's really clear to me that no matter what I do in this situation, I 
have no real, real way of beating the Sylveon, so I don't really see a way to win this match anymore. Regardless, um, I missed something. I probably missed a Fire Blast in, this, in that situation. It would have been neat to get a Fire Blast off on that uh, Volcarona, but now that he gets that Volcarona in for absolutely free, and it probably had Roost anyway, so it probably never even mattered, even a little bit, but uh, the moral of the story is that I really needed that... I really aggressively needed that, um, that, uh, Scizor and the, and the Beedrill to be able to, uh, A, take out the Sylveon at some point, and to apply the necessary amount of pressure that I really needed to put on this Volcarona. At this point, I was just hoping that I would take a hit and maybe get a glare off, but it goes for the Savage spin out. Totally fair play, totally fair bring against my team, and... Um, yeah, there's not going to be a whole much to say here. I just really got pretty messed up by a Volcarona that I let kind of get out of hand. And it's all because I got flustered because I didn't have anything to hit the Sylveon, which is because of a mental mistake against the, uh, against the Silvali Steel, which was led up to by a really bad mistake on that uh, Weavile with the Beedrill. But uh, these types of games happen, and it's my first week in this league with this team. Uh, it's definitely a match that I can bounce back from, but uh, man, this Volcarona is an absolute monster. I, I had exhausted all my checks to most of his mons. I didn't... I really undervalued how, value, how much that... Um, Beedrill would be important for the later game, and uh, I just straight up really needed it, and again, I had no business, I'm going to say this, I've said this a lot already, but I had no business uh, risking that role on that uh, Weavile when I know I had the switches in, I know I had uh, the mons to, to, check those mo to check his mons, but uh, at the end of the day, I didn't do um, what I knew I needed to do. A couple of super aggressive mental mistakes. Um, I probably should have uh, took some more time in team building, been in a better headspace uh, when actually playing this match. There's a lot that I could have done differently in prep and whatnot, but at the same time, all the credit in the world to my opponent. He definitely built for me well, and he exploited the heck out of my mistakes. So I gave him an opening, he opened it real wide, and he got it up to a 5-0. I've seen plenty of people, me myself included, that uh, I get an opening to win and it still ends up being like a 2-0 because I didn't hit my opponents hard enough with that advantage that they gave me and uh, it ends up being a lot closer than it has to be or, in, or put myself in a position to choke the game away. So a whole bunch of credit to him for never really giving me a moment to really breathe. Um, I Like I said, I definitely got flustered after a few mistakes, but that's going to be week one. 100% a match that I can bounce back from. I definitely know all the mistakes that I made in this match. Definitely things that I can improve for in the future. And I still love the heck out of this team. I think um, the more that I've been able to build with this team, the more it's grown on me. And uh, the more it's going to continue to grow on me just as the weeks go on. I think I'm going to enjoy this uh, at least for the first quarter of the season. Or third of the season. And we're going to be drafting again soon. So I'll have some more mods to play with then. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with uh, the final week of the PCL coming soon next week, I believe. And uh, obviously more weeks of the APA coming really, really soon with a whole new draft. Probably a new draft recap and all those types of things. But uh, once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll be once again out.